everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Two teams will need their quarterbacks to step up and lead their offenses on the gridiron today. It's Jared Goff's Rams going up against Wilson Seahawks. What a surprise here. There's rain in Seattle as we're off to CenturyLink Field to link up with our broadcast team of Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, no trip to the Northwest is really complete without a little rain, and we're going to get plenty of it here at CenturyLink Field in Seattle. These folks love their football in Seattle. This was the scene a moment ago as the home squad came out of the tunnel, and it was just absolutely deafening in this building. They're set for football, so are we, as the Seahawks get set to match up with the Los Angeles Rams. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. Russell Wilson leading him out there, six-year quarterback who finished his college ball, of course, as a Wisconsin Badger. One of the more cerebral quarterbacks in the NFL. Analyzes situations, watches a ton of tape, adapts his game to whatever is presented in front of him. And despite the fact he's been in the league for six years, the future still bright for Russell Wilson. They'll run it now, out of the gun. A beautiful spin and room to run. He finds an opening past the 40. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. So much of this game is still mental, still psychological. Yeah, we just saw a big-time run right there. But you have to believe he was dreaming about this last night in his hotel room before this one, thinking, hey, first time I touch it, let's go for some big yardage and set a tone. That's exactly what he got done. sideways at the 44-yard line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Well, not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. On second down, Wilson. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. And he's brought down. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. Probably mean to jump in on your partner, but they didn't waste any time getting downfield, did they? I mean, a nice big play there. Three plays, three successful plays in plus territory. Now this defense on its heels a bit. It seems like they had something targeted there, doesn't it? It's like, okay, we've got a matchup we like coming right out of the gate. Let's go ahead and get right to it. They go play action here on first down. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. 
And this O-line, it is the lifeblood of the offense. They established the tone. Mean, nasty, physical. They can't wait to get after people. That allows the rest of the offense to feel confident. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. He lost two there, and it's third down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL, and a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. They go play action with Wilson. And that is incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. Now Blair Walsh on for a long field goal. He's hit from as far away as 56 in his young career. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. I tell you, it's not easy kicking field goals in the best of conditions. Yet in a downpour like we're in right now, it makes it that much harder. And sure enough, they can't convert here. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. Well, now they'll start three yards shy of midfield after that long 57-yard miss. Now Goff on first down, and he's got his man on the out route. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. A gain of six there on first. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up a third and one. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Now a give running left for Gurley. And heavy contact. He is knocked down hard right at the 45. A loss of a yard, and it brings up four. You know, we might start getting some props here in the booth. You know, that one that says the D and then the fence that you put up next to it. How about that? They brought out the jumbo package and still couldn't move them off the line of scrimmage enough to pick up that first down. Impressive. They were ready defensively for that jumbo set. It's Johnny Hecker now, an All-Pro three of the last four years on to punt. Back deep for the Seahawks, the All-Pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. They had no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. 
But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Now Wilson on first down. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Robert Quinn. Tough to handle on that blitz. He gets him for a loss of five. Now we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. here back to the 15. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play and they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long. All right, partner, let's go back over the last couple of plays. Sack, loss of yards on a running play, not exactly the sequence that an offensive coordinator gets comfortable with when calling plays. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Operating from the gun, Wilson. He's going to wind up and air it out. And I think that one might have been intercepted, but he will be ruled out of bounds. So this will go only as incomplete. I don't care what game it is, everyone's always looking for an early advantage, an early break, and they almost had one there. That should have been an interception. Nice catch. Just couldn't get his feet down in bounds. And offensively lucky to have that one back. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away. Standing just about on his own goal line. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. This is taken at the 18. And one more. Now a hit and a loose football. And the Seahawks have picked it up. I remember sitting in special teams meetings, and at some point during the meeting, the coach would always say, you better treat this one just like you're playing offense or defense. It's a big part of the game. And we just saw evidence of why right there with that fumble. Yeah, fumble on the punt, and after it was turning up to be a pretty decent return. Yeah, a really nice return. They were going to be set up okay, and the offense would feel good running onto the field. And now the defense has to try it out there and try and slow them down. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Here's Wilson throwing on first down. And some room to maneuver. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and it'll bring up a second down. in a good spot here, second and two. Now Wilson operating from the gun. And Graham's got it, complete. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Now Seahawk first down, Wilson to his big target, Graham. There's Kapush to the tight end, and I think they were looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, the size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? In the red zone this time. And 
And he'll give it here to his running back. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. The defense here for the Rams. Let's take a look at Michael Brocker's defensive tackle. This is a young man who understands leverage. Rarely do I see him bowled over by an offensive lineman. Usually he's the one who's underneath them, moving them, creating space, and getting upfield to make tackles. Now they try the right side here. And he is knocked down from the side at the 21-yard line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. the play fake. Here's Wilson. He's going to let it go deep for the hit. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Kayvon Webster. So they lost yardage and they declined the penalty. There's no logical reasoning to do that. I'm trying to go through this little Rolodex in, in this small brain of mine, and I'm coming up with nothing, partner. <laughs> I've got zip on that one. Take the yardage, right? Take the penalty. I, I don't get it. I, I don't get it either. For Gurley. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. On second down, here's Goff. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Seven yards remain now on third down. gone. They got him in. It's Woods. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. defense not giving him anything there maybe a yard up to the 36 nice job by the defensive front there to hold him to a short gain on first down well played I must say yeah only getting one yard there was no room to run see if they stay on the ground for second down He'll take this up to about the 37. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Well, now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long. And that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. And the offense needs seven out of this play on third down. Out of 
of the gun. Gone. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he'll punt it away for the second time. It'll be a 48-yard punt. Five there on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and ten. The Seahawks offense now. They get ready to come back onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll make it second down. throw is Wilson to throw on second down and the hit jarred it loose it's incomplete this team is not going to make it easy for you they're a physical group and we just saw it there on that play they came in made the contact just as he's trying to haul it in the Seahawks on third down 0 for 3 to this point they could use a conversion this is third and seven From the gun, it's Wilson. And some room to work. Good move at the 30. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Toss. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? <laughs> Almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line, but how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? So a turnover-filled first quarter of play comes to an end. Nothing, nothing, our score. We'll be back to Seattle right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. Time to the tailback. And he's going to be stopped up quickly here. 
Just a yard up to the 39. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. And the Seahawks on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and ten. From the gun, Wilson. And down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. Here's John Ryan now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And this is their third drive. Maybe the focus right now not so much on points, but getting their first first down. And when you start off a game, you don't even think that's an issue, do you? But you go a drive, a second drive, no first down, that becomes an issue. Now you got to think about, okay, what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up? Now it's Gurley. And now running right through it. And he gets this one all the way up to the 40. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him. That full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. seen but finding none he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and that's it no gain on the play there second down and he got off the end there very quickly to make that play yeah, that was almost like the bullet train wasn't it i mean just so quick 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 and what a terrific play holding them to no gain a shotgun snap for gone it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. The Rams on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. To throw is gone. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Mike Bennett in there to get him for a loss of three. And it'll be fourth down. Well, they only had a yard to go. They try to pass the football. Defense blitz. Defense got there. Yeah, I think then this one, this is probably good scouting. Understanding a few tendencies and figuring out that, hey, they may take a shot. They dialed up the pressure and got to him. Here's Johnny Hacker now as he's on to punt for L.A. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds at the what here? The 12-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here. A little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old school coaches don't necessarily mind that. 
didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Play action. It's Wilson. They find some open field here. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And a big hit there as he runs into a brick wall. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. On second down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. The offense on third down tonight. Just one for five to this point. They're looking at third and a few inches. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Call it no gain there, and it leads to a fourth down. That was a terrific job by the defense, stopping them on third and short. But sometimes you get some visual cues from the offense, because when they're going in short yard situations, you might see the offensive line come in tighter together, a little more shoulder to shoulder, trying to wedge a hole in the middle. They didn't get it done on that play. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And the Rams now coming out on the field. So far, they've had three drives, three punts. Not good. Not good indeed, because you've got to have something to show for being out on the field. Now, sometimes, if you have a game where neither side has scored, three punts isn't a bad thing. But when you're trying to set the pace, get up on top in a game, you've got to show better offense and find a way to put some points on the board. Here's Gurley. And not much doing. He'll get this only up to about the 36. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That was a really nice play. He able to stack that one up. But they get back in the huddle. He's got he's to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. He filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. They run. It's Gurley. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing on third. Goal. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he'll get across midfield and down to the 48-yard line. 
three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now gone. Throw left side, complete to Cup. And he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. running room down to the 32 give him three on first down it'll set up a second and seven Intended receiver that time. And that'll make it third down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Rams on third down. Two for five to this point. This is third and seven. Golf now looks to throw. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And Zerline's kick is good. And the Rams have the first points here. It's 3-0. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. Able to do that, got it above the defense, and over the post. the made field goal Zerline back out there now to send this one away and this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line and out now come the Seahawks and still no points on the scoreboard you're coming off of the three and out they're just looking for anything to grab onto right now, aren't they? I'm wondering if someone's going to take charge in the huddle. You know, we always look, at, look to the quarterback, but sometimes it's another player on the team, a star, a veteran, someone with some excitement and energy. It's like, all right, guys, let's shake things up and let's go because they still have an opportunity to make things happen. Shake it off. First down, Wilson. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That pass falling to the ground gives me a second to look back to November. Offensive and defensive rookies of the month, Charles. It was Alvin Kamara offensively and then Reuben Foster, the old Alabama player, defensively. So I'm going to start with Reuben Foster because... He was a high draft pick, ended up going in the first round, but didn't go as high as we expected due to some lingering shoulder issues at Alabama. But guess what? What a great pick for San Francisco. Now that he's managed to stay healthy, you're seeing all the things you expected to see. The speed, the agility, the ability to hit, diagnose plays, it's all in evidence. And Alvin Kamara, he just amazes us week in and week out with his playmaking ability. 
And the Seahawks on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and five. Out of the gun. Here's Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. Now the ball comes loose. And now the Rams have got it. Go the other way. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. the Rams offense they work their way back on the field and they split the uprights last time for three they've got the lead they're not going to play this conservative they're, they're not hoping for another field goal they're hoping for a touchdown I'm with you on that one I like where your head is I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right trying to sit on a lead and play that way that doesn't work too well for most teams run your offense yeah, run what you do best on the gas. exactly put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way and the best way to do it touchdowns Now a handoff as they run left side. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. If you're the coaching staff upstairs, you might want to file that play away. Do you see how fast the safety closed on that one? Coming up in run support, made a big-time tackle. You might want to try and check into a pass next time. Yeah, got him for a loss. Really, really great play defensively. Here's Goff now on second down. He's going to dump it off to Gurley. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10 to the 7. He got 29 yards that time. When I watched Jared Goff on tape at Cal, I saw a guy who wasn't just a dart thrower. You know, a lot of people said, ah, oh, he's perfect for the West Coast offense. I always thought he could do a little bit more, and that was the reason why. He can push it downfield. He has a good, strong arm. Pretty good run right there. A nice pickup of six there to get him closer to the end zone, and it'll be second and goal. When we talk about being on schedule, I think they're on schedule after that run, getting it right down there on the doorstep. Maybe even a little bit ahead, because now the defense can't dictate with pressure. They're guessing about where you're going to go. I might come right back at them with the same play, the same set, and see if they can stop them. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Larry Ridley. Larry will have the highlights of this first half, but he won't have touchdowns because we haven't had any to this point. But there's still time, though, partner. result in him losing yardage back to the three so he loses three yards there now third down two straight shots on the ground now on third do you go to the air I think the possibility exists and if you're doing it you're probably going play action since you ran it twice but I often think the second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory this offense so far on third down They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and goal. Goal. And it's caught. And he's going to take this one in for a Rams touchdown. Tyler Higby from three yards out. And the Rams add on to their lead. 
Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Now Greg Zerline on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. The drive summary that time, five plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Zerline out now to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions. But some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense. But when you turn it over, it changes momentum. And when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Well, throw on first down with Wilson. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. But with the breather, shift gears to the NFL coaching news that certainly everyone was talking about this week. New York Giants parting ways, Charles, with Ben McAdoo. And that's the first time that the Giants organization has made a move during the season since 1976. And they relieved Bill Arnsbarger of his duties as the head coach. They also, uh, also told the general manager his services were no longer needed. So they're going to clean house and start fresh again in 2018. What a tough way to go for the New York Giants. It's been an interesting year for them. It's just a franchise, obviously, with so much pride in their history. We'll see if they can turn it around. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Wilson. Well, the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Now, whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. So here we go, first and 10 now. From the shotgun, Wilson. A dump off for Davis. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Second down now after the pass completion. Wilson now from the gun. He'll throw. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. 
He's thrown one interception already, and that doesn't necessarily mean the rest of the game is going to go like that. But it does seem that he's a little bit off in his approach to this one. Yeah, it does. And that was a risky throw right there. Got to be careful about taking care of the ball, making sure you get back within yourself. I mean, those mechanics that they work on all the time, they're there for a reason. Kind of get back to those and maybe tamp it down a little bit. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Every year I go to the combine and marvel at the speeds that linebackers are running nowadays. They run like DBs. And let's face it, they know how to finish plays, too. Eyes up, head up, run right through them. They're going on fourth down. It's Wilson. And some space here. Dancing away at the 30. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, this from 39. And that hits off the left upright, and it caroms away no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So he had a chance to get him on the board there, but unfortunately that big yellow metallic structure in the back of the end zone, it had other plans. And that's when we're kickers watching it the whole way saying, oh no, don't hit it, rats. And you see the clock almost empty, so this is likely the last play in the second quarter. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. So we've come to halftime. It's the visiting Rams taking the lead to the break. As we send you now to Orlando and our Tiburon Studios, where Larry Ridley is standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Charles. And welcome to our EA Halftime Report. I'm Larry Ridley. The Seahawks are behind right now, but the home crowd should give them a boost. The Rams have looked good on the road and will just try to keep the ball rolling in the second half. All right, let's roll those highlights. Seahawks have it late in the second. Baldwin's got the grab, but fumbles here. Now following the fumble. Higby's wide open here on the catch, and this four-play drive goes for a touchdown. As they go out in front, 10-0. Still a little time left on the clock. Lockett's by himself here, and he ends up at the 44-yard line before he stopped on the play. Seahawks, though, would miss the field goal on the drive. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. 
Here's the Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. The third quarter starts with a run by Gurley. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam through the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. To throw on second down is gone. Open man right side is cup complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And now here's a carry heading left. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed, and that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. short one here complete to his tight end and a big collision there as he winds up flat on his back at the 46 not a big window to throw coverage wasn't too bad there yeah they had him under wraps pretty well but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball the Rams on third down three for seven so far in this game this will be third and six On the draw, Goff gives to Gurley. And he's got enough for the first across midfield to the 48. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. I definitely like the play call. You don't expect it on third and five, third and six, do you? You expect a pass play. Had a little courage there to call the run, and boy, they were successful. here on first down and the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down Jaron Reed forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone I don't know if that was the case here but the end result was the same no one fooled the quarterback was hit receiver that's Sammy Watkins and he'll be taken down at the 44 yard line they get 14 back but it leads now to a third down <laughs> 
The Rams on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and six. Now a draw as Goff gives to Gurley. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive, because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Gurley again here on first down. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Second down following the run. Here's gone. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Sammy Watkins, the intended receiver, and it's third down. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you've been overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. The 25-yard line is what they need here. This is third down. Now gone. And he's going to go down. They get to him back at the 40. Frank Clark in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. On now is the big leg of Greg Zerline. He has hit from as far as 61 away in his career. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good, and this score will stay right where it is. So they'll come away with nothing here. A disappointing result even on a day like this. And as a kicker in the rain, you've got to slow things down a little bit. Give your holder an extra half second to make sure everything's secure. And here, he might have rushed this one a little, and it winds up no good. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance to turn that into points on the offensive end. Can you imagine what the grease board looks like at the half? Because no, tell me. that's exactly what they printed up. Stop them on defense, get the ball back for our offense, and go downfield and score some points. Now, the last part remains to be seen, but they got the first part done very well. Do people use grease boards, or you mean the magic marker boards? Yeah, those two. <laughs> <laughs> They'll run it now out of the gun. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. But well, these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage to be found. And the offense behind the chains here a touch on second and 11. Wilson and this one's going to go the wrong way losing yardage back at the 42 he lost four there and it's third down The Seahawks on third down. Just one conversion in eight tries. Not good. This will be third and 15. 
They go play action now. Wilson. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Robert Quinn in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Here's John Ryan now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Forty-four on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. The Rams offense now. They get set and head back onto the field. And they had compiled a pretty long drive last time. Unfortunately, though, it ended with no points after the missed field goal. And that can hurt the psyche of a team because as they drove downfield, you know you're never supposed to count points in your mind until they go up on the board. But let's face it, we've been there. We've seen teams before. They were counting on those points. They didn't get them. Can they come back now, start over again, and grind it out? They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. Give him 10 yards there, and about by the nose of the football, he's going to have a first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. comes to the line now first and ten again they run with Gurley and he's got some space here Todd Gurley wave goodbye he's at the 30 and all the way down to the 17 yard line a big run there by Gurley 54 yards they're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And now a first down following that long game. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be dropped at about the 11 after only a yard. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Rams on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and four. A shotgun snap for Goff. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. I know you felt like saying touchdown there, didn't you, partner? That looked like a sure six points, but the contact jarred it free. Got his hands on it, could not hold on through the end of the play. So on fourth down, Goff will yield to Greg Zerline for the field goal try. Throwing his Mannion. And this one will not work out. It is incomplete. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. All right, Brandon, instead of breaking down, you know, that last play, I've got to ask, is that time of year? Because 
Don't the fantasy football playoffs start? Aren't we ending the regular season? And if so, <laughs> how's your year going? I know, yeah, man. The Godden Family Football League, it is starting next week. I'm on a six-game winning streak. I'm 9-4 and four going into the playoffs. Look at you. Are you, yeah. you going to be the number one seed? I'm not. The I'm the number three seed, but with my win streak and where I'm at, I'm kind of like Aaron Rodgers and the Packers last year, except he's better looking and more successful. So do you tell everybody to relax, <laughs> or do you just guarantee victory? Oh, I just guarantee. There you go. Now Wilson on first down. Room here to run. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. It's a gain of nine yards, and it'll be second and about a yard. Davis now. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter. No time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. And the offense lining up first and ten. They go again with Davis. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. It's a loss of two, now third down. And that's another stop for the defense, something we've seen all game long. They've been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. The Seahawks on third down. A pretty anemic, a very anemic one for nine thus far. This is third and 11. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. The Seahawks on third down. A pretty anemic, a very anemic, one for nine thus far. This is third and 11. Play action. Now Wilson. And he's got room. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Now 
And the yellow flag hurts this offense, and now they face a tough third down. They go play action with Wilson. Able to get away. That's why you keep the legs churning. He's going to look deep down the field. And incomplete. A disappointing drop there defensively by the rookie. And now fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball. And they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead. Fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Here's John Ryan now, standing right on his own five-yard line. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. here on first down and it's a short one here complete to the tight end and this one will go to the 28 yard line a good pickup there eight yards on the first down completion another nice pickup through the air and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation Brandon but with this lead they're electing to throw the football swing slant quick outs things that they consider safe so they complete the pass and now they face a second down And to give this time to the tailback. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Second and ten, golf. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Let's not quibble about the gain there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Rams on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and four. Goff now looking to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it was real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. Yeah. 
And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. play fake here's Wilson and down he goes on the pressure from the Rams defense Mark Barron leading the surge there he drops him for a loss of six the amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary let's just face it this offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush it's been demonstrated time and time again Wilson now off the bootleg. It's caught outright by Graham. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. That catch good for five. It's third down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. The Seahawks on third down, not getting the job done at all. A very poor one for ten. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Spins by. Skirts by him at the 35. That one good for 15 and a first. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Play action. It's Wilson. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Alec Ogletree leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On second down, here's Wilson. It's caught. Lock it. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it. Indeed, here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. Ball start, offense. And that'll set them back five. Come <laughs> on. 
From the gun, it's Wilson. And he finds his tight end, Graham. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. It's a solid pickup of 11, and it's second down. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Second down and four. From the shotgun, Wilson. And his throw here is incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. And the Seahawks on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and four. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. False start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. from the gun. Wilson. And some room to roam now. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and that's going to make it fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. On the right hash, officially this will be a 51-yard attempt. And no, it doesn't get there. Hits the crossbar, bounces back out. He had it on line, but it comes up about a rotation short. Well, he had it on line, gave it a pretty good ride, too, but in the end, he's a victim of the crossbar. And, Brandon, you know kickers very well. I bet if we ask him after the game, he'll say he didn't get all of it. We've seen him hit from deeper than this in warm-ups, but here, he's a foot or so from clearing that bar. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. On first down, it's Gurley. He'll be stopped shy of the 45 despite a great move. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. Wide open receiver complete. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. 23 yards on the play. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff, didn't Yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Fresh set of downs here. Right, right, right. 
They try right side here, Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. Now gone. Yeah, quick throw here. That's complete. And he's brought down. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. So the offense has it first and 10. Now a handoff as they run left side. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. A gain of three, second down. At this stage of the game, with a score where it is, the key here is to hand bounds, and he did just that. Not by a huge margin, but he stayed in. And those come up in what we like to call winning edge meetings. The things that you have to do, late game situations, kicking situations, doesn't matter what it is, the things you have to do to win a game, and that comes up in that meeting, then you practice it, they gotta be happy to see it executed, being able to stay in bounds and work the clock. He gets it to Gurley, complete. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you've got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. the four-yard line. It's first and goal now. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction. Defense. So that's going to move them half the distance. First of all, you can't jump in this situation. But think about your play calling now. Could easily change what you want to do and maybe make things a little bit easier. First and goal here from the two. one but this time they get him behind the line this will be a two-yard loss on the play and that'll make it second and goal this is where coaches have to have spent a lot of time going over situations with their players because him getting tackled there is not the worst thing in the world you're going to run more plays right clock's going to go but his thought process is getting into the end zone it's counterintuitive for him to actually go down in this spot yeah but you, like you say you don't want to get in the end zone too early here no not at all because you may leave an opening that could come back and get you to throw on second down is gone oh no he lost the football and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back That one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game. So hold on here, not done in the fourth. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. 
But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Following the fumble recovery, it's Wilson. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. It's the rookie from Boston College, John Johnson, and they will take over at the 29-yard line. Scoring has really been at a premium, and Charles, you got to tip your cap to this defense coming in here. Their offense, too, but this whole team coming in here on the road, getting a hard-fought win. I think the way that they're finishing this one up, an exclamation point on a terrific game. As you noted, hard for them to put points on the board, and they hold them down one more time and finalize things. And the Rams getting set to go now. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. Yeah, difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Following the fumble recovery, Goff. Under pressure, they got him again. Sheldon Richardson with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Second down, this is Gurley. Dropped at the 35, so able to display his strength, but not much room to operate. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. He's going to need a little mustard on this one. It will be a 51-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So with that miss, Charles, you have to figure their fate. It might be sealed. Yeah, you needed two scores. So you take the field goal first and then worry about getting the ball back. But that may not matter now. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens.
And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Now Wilson. And left side here, it's Graham. And I think we've got a hold here. It's a five-yard pickup for the moment. Let's see what our referee says. Holding offense. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. toward the center of the field but it's incomplete one thing I have learned receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline but do that over the middle to them and not only are the DB's going to throw a little verbal trash their way when they get back to the huddle they have a few words to say to their QB aren't they yeah hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw luckily fell incomplete Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. Wilson to throw. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Aaron Donald in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Now a handoff here to his running back. And this is going to come up well short as they stop him on fourth down. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And it's becoming increasingly clear now that the Rams are going to win this football game. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. as they take the knee and play is stopped here timeout it's the defense calling the timeout here it'll be their third and final timeout so as they talk things over we'll step aside go victory formation as they take the knee. Hey, hey, hey. 
Goff with a kneel down here, and that should put a conclusion to this one. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This from 36 yards out. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game. But these two teams, they had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys I'm a little skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you trust skeptical. it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Get your notes laminated, because, you know, open-air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. With that, we say good night from Seattle.